We've been talking about the appendix. So I was talking to a friend the other day, actually. Um, for, I guess, growing up, I mean, we always know that people have had their appendix removed. Um, it's just something that just we never sort of really considered for my whole upbringing about what the appendix actually does, what the appendix does. And it's sort of always been there of something that if it gets infected, we just have it removed. But I wanted to have a discussion because obviously as new science develops, as you know, more comes out in relation to the appendix, it actually does have a role, doesn't it? Yeah, it was always thought to be something that was vestigial, uh, a hangover in our evolutionary uh, process that we don't actually need. But now we know that that was wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we should be, I mean, as always, anyone should consult their doctor if there's any pain that could be associated with the appendix. We're not here to play doctor, but we are going to look at a paper today. Uh, that's very important because if your appendix bursts and you haven't consulted somebody, <laughs> a medical well, professional, that's just common sense. Yeah, you will die. <laughs> well, that's it, 100%. We're going to focus on one particular paper. Um, firstly, Dad, like, well, what would be, what do we know that could be the cause of, of appendicitis? Well, it's an infection. Itis always means inflammation. Yeah. And so the inflammation of the appendix can be caused by a blockage that then results in bacteria causing inflammation in, in the appendix. Mm. And the most common bacterium involved in that is Escherichia coli. Or e. Coli. e. coli, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sort of only been discovered more recently, I guess, you know, focusing on what is this little appendix thing that hangs off the, right, at the end of the small intestine and in transitioning into the, uh, exactly. the large intestine. Exactly. Or the colon. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I think we had this discussion, why does it sit there? I mean, I guess if the small intestine is responsible for a lot of absorption, I mean, why it genetically sits there in all of us? Well, I guess it's uh, because it's at the junction of the small and the large intestine, and we know now that it acts as a reservoir of, of commensal or normal bacteria that uh, make up your gut microflora, it's there uh, strategically positioned to resupply those bacteria to either the colon or backwards into the, the small, small intestine. Because bacteria so, can, can yeah, go they'll anywhere, move they'll around. find a way. Yeah, they'll mm. find a way, mm. that's right. Okay, so we're going to focus on one paper that's uh, printed in the British Medical Journal. It was published uh, September 2nd, 2021, so just at the end of last year. It was a big study involving around uh, over 400,000 people, longitudinal study, yes. which means long-term over a 20-year period. Longitudinal always means over a period of time. Yep. Yep. And the paper in the British Medical Journal is titled Appendectomy Increases the Risk of Colorectal Cancer Through Causing Gut Microbiota Dysbiosis or Imbalance in a Large Population-Based Study. And the background that they put into this paper is the appendix plays an important role in maintaining and modulating homeostasis, which is a balance. Maintaining normal balance. Yep and biodiversity of gut microbiome by providing an ideal ecological niche for gut common commensal bacteria. That's your normal bacteria that are there all the time. Production, and the production of immunoglobulin. That's it, that's antibodies. That's it, in yep. this In this particular case, it's talking about, replen uh, it's actually a source of replenishment of IgA, immunoglobulin A, which is part of your innate immune system. That's the first line of defence. If you get an infection, mm. those antibodies are there. They're a general sort of antibody that hasn't been specifically induced by a, a particular infection. Mm. But it's the first line of defence. And if that actually manages to deal with the infection, the immune system says, that's enough. We don't need to now produce antibodies that are specific Yep. to the infection that we're fighting because we've overcome the infection using the first line of defense. The first line of defense. Which could be the mucosal membranes of the lungs. Yeah, it's in the, the mucosal membrane, particularly in the intestine, and uh, it's secreted into that mucosal layer normally, uh, along with antimicrobial peptides, and uh, which, uh, as I say, the first line of defense in the intestine. Yep. They continue here saying surgical removal of the, appendix, of the appendix impacts the composition of gut microbial community and its homeostasis, 
We aim to elucidate the association between appendectomy and subsequent risk of colorectal cancer, or CRC, development and explore its relationship with gut microbiota dysbiosis. That's right. So in a nutshell there, they want to look at with someone whose appendix has been removed versus someone whose appendix still remains. That's right, in terms of their risk of developing colorectal cancer over time. The methods they used was two independent epidemiological studies involving 402,622 subjects. This yep. was done um, in various universities from Hong Kong. I'm um, involved a lot of scientists and doctors. What would be sort of the main thing that we're looking into? So obviously people with their appendix they, removed, uh, people yeah, with Yeah, they're still comparing with two groups in yep. terms of their risk of developing colorectal cancer, but they're doing that also in conjunction with looking at the changes to their microbiome. So they're looking at, and, and they report in there that certain bacteria, the, the, the people who've had their appendix removed end up with more of those, so they're enhanced or enriched, if you like. Whereas other bacteria are less uh, present. In other words, they're depleted to some extent reduced in number and that is known to those particular bacteria as you know uh, I think it says seven of those bacteria that were enhanced in the case of people who had their appendix removed are actually capable of producing colorectal cancer. Yeah is that because you are removing like this little store that has this like bacterial backup? Well uh, yes so it's controlling the balance of well because bacteria? because the col the uh, appendix produces IgA as well that is part of the mechanism for controlling the the various populations of bacteria yeah in there gotcha. so what kind of things like obviously if someone's already had their appendix removed you know that's is it then important for someone to look at their diet or you know whether it be well, probiotic course, supplementation of or... course it's always a motherhood statement that we should have a good diet and we understand also that fiber is important in your diet and um, it selects for certain beneficial bacteria but of course we need to remember that a diet can only act on the bacteria that are in the gut yep. and if you haven't got a whole lot of certain bacteria there, if they're totally missing, no amount of good diet will actually enhance those because they're not there to be enhanced in the first place. Yep. There are people that have such a bad microbiome that almost no amount of good diet can fix them. Mm. Right? And then you've got the people that are uh, bulletproof almost against anything because yep. they've got enough of those good bacteria that they can sort of get away with it. Yep. But I'm not advocating that they should. No. But um, I think the important thing is here that uh, one of the major causes, as I said before, E. coli mm. is the major cause of appendicitis. And we know that particular probiotic bacteria can suppress very effectively those. In a nutshell, anyone that has had their appendix removed needs to be careful. Maybe well, they need to be aware of the fact that probiotics. their risk has, over a 20-year period post-appendectomy, there is an 18.6% increase in risk of colorectal cancer. Yep. So, now, what was the percentage of people that were... Uh, I think, one uh, in... I was reading an article, there was, on average, there's probably more now, this was back in 2019, I, that on average about 300,000 people per year in the US have their appendix removed. Right, okay. So we all know people. I know people, yeah. Yeah, uh, who've had their appendix removed. So it's a significant proportion of the population. And those people are, they need to be aware that they, they probably should be taking something that will suppress those potentially bad E. coli's in mm. their gut. Yeah. Um, and the same, the same applies to someone who's still got their appendix. Prevention, sure. as we always say, prevention is better than the cure. That's right. I mean, you know, the cause of things like polyps, which are the, uh, pre the forerunner or precursor, if you like, of uh, colorectal cancer, is caused by irritation of the bowel lining by 
these bacteria that are E. coli, for example, will metabolise bile and produce carcinogens, which lead to the cancer of the bowel. And uh, uh, so if you know that particular good bacteria and combined, of course, with prebiotics that will boost them to very high numbers, if you know of a product that's got that in it, yep. then you should take it. So fundamentally, this appendix that I'm sure I've spoken to a lot of people just thought just can be removed, doesn't do much. Science didn't even know what it did for, right. <laughs> for until recent times. Yeah. Actually could play a massive role in our overall health because there was another paper we were going to refer to, um, which you know I'll, I'll link and I'll put up the, but it's increased chronic kidney disease developed and progression in diabetic patients after appendectomy. That's right. Um, I know we were briefly talking about you know just before there was more articles coming out about Parkinson's. Yeah. You know people that have had their appendix removed and that linked to Parkinson's. So that's right. Well, the, of course, as a an overall statement, uh, as a doctor once said to me, everything starts with the gut. Yep. And as I say, everything starts with the gut microbiome, the bacteria, the bacteria in, the gut. in particular mm. in the gut. And more and more we're discovering that so many of these diseases that there may be a genetic link as well, mm. but it never explained, the genetics never explained the whole picture. Yep. And now we're starting to realise that it's the microbiome in the gut mm. that is having such a dramatic impact on so many diseases, causing things like mm. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and yep. so on that you wouldn't think yep. had anything to do with the gut at yep. all. And we can, you know, we'll find more papers and we'll look into more things that yes. specifically about, we're only looking at one, which yep. is obviously colorectal cancer. Yeah. And just mentioned, you know, chronic kidney disease, you know, and That's various right. other and, things. So, and Parkinson's, yes. Yeah. So fundamentally, you know, that little appendix that for so long or until recently, we just thought was just a little hanger on her on the side of the yep. the large intestine. Vestigial is the yep. word that they used to always use regarding it and saying it was an evolutionary sort of almost a mistake they were implying. Yeah, know, but yeah. Uh, it's always had a purpose and we didn't realise it. Yeah, it was yeah. like, uh, you're a mum with me. <laughs> 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 Thankfully, you found a good purpose in life. <laughs> Tell people's poo. <laughs> Fun, I hope everyone found that interesting, that the little appendix that we didn't know until recently what it did, now plays what we think, and as the research comes out, a very important role in our overall health. And especially, That's obviously, right. as that little pocket of bacteria, or modulator, you could say, of our microbiome in our gut That's bacteria. Right. And particularly replenishing the gut with the, the, the commensal bacteria after there's been an event like food poisoning, diarrhea that have flushed them all out. It's it also re important. Acts yeah. of replenishment. It's a little res little reservoir. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope everyone found that interesting. We will link all, we'll have all the descriptions, all the papers linked um, at the bottom of the video. Um, and hope you all have a fantastic day.